everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to share with you my February TBR. Some of these are ones from last month that I didn't get to, although I did get to a lot of things last month. I think first I'll start with my adult books. Two that are moving over from last month are Super Pumped, A Battle for Uber, and On Fragile Waves by E. Lily Yu. This one doesn't have an audiobook and this one's only available on Audible. That's why they haven't been like at the top of my list to try. And again, it's a problem for me when the audiobook is not readily available. I'm gonna give them another month and see if I get to them this month. A new one is called What Just Happened by Charles Finch. Um, this is a writer that was tasked by a publication, I feel like the LA Times, to keep a diary of when COVID started basically. So they're just little dated entries of what was happening and kind of like the at the time reaction that we had. Um, obviously we are still like in the midst of this pandemic and this is not like, like a relic. I think it'll just be interesting to see what it was like that we were thinking about two years ago. I've heard that this is funny and I also have the audiobook so I'm gonna try this one out and see what I think. I kind of had a, a little bit of a I don't know what to read next kind of a rut in January especially for adult fiction. I was really searching for what to read next which is not usually something that happens to me but for adult fiction I was kind of stumped a little bit and then I thought you know let's pick up an author that I've read before that I've really liked and I've been meaning to get to another one of her novels this is Department of Speculation by Jenny Offal I loved her book Weather and I thought it was so funny in like a really sarcastic and satirical way and I feel like that book really just got me so I'm hoping that I get some of that in this one as well and I love that her books are nice, short, and sweet, and to the point. Another one that I'm excited to try is White Ivy by Susie Yang. I have read that this is supposed to be a mix between like a mystery and a coming of age story, which I think sounds really, really fascinating. I don't know much more than that, and I think that's all I, I really want to know. This wasn't a lot of people's best of year list from last year. Some books that I don't have on me but are ready and waiting for me at the library, or my hold is coming up really soon and it's gonna be this month, include Will by Will Smith. I'm really excited to try this one out. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the actual physical copy but my audiobook is almost ready. I also want to get to Cultish. I also am not sure if I'm gonna get the physical copy of this in time but my audiobook keeps getting sent to me and I keep delaying it hoping that maybe I could get to the physical copy as well. So we'll see about those two. I'm really excited about Cultish. I've heard really good things about it. Same for Will. I also want to try two more adult fiction books. One is called Finley Donovan is Killing It and I have the audiobook on Libra FM. Finlay Donovan is Killing It is a mystery book and I feel like it's supposed to be funny. And then last but not least, another one that I have from Libra FM is Olga Dies Dreaming. I think it looks into kind of like their family and uh, their family's past. As for kids books, I'm going to quickly run through the ones that I had as holdovers from last month. I really made good headway into them. I read maybe almost half of them. So these are the ones that are left. I Know Your Secret, a mystery thriller, just like that, which I think is a new one. I don't think I showed you this one last time, but I had to put it on hold. And this one is a historical fiction. It's set during the Vietnam War, I believe. Two that I had from last month include A Soft Place and Violets Are Blue, both contemporary middle grade books. Then we have Willa Dean. Since the last time I filmed a video I figured out it's actually a book about climate change or environmentalism which I find fascinating. The Shape of Thunder, How to Find What You're Not Looking For which is a historical fiction. And then this one I'm not sure if I'm still as interested as I was the last time I made a video that I mentioned it. This one is Paradise on Fire. The last one is actually a part of a video that I'm filming right now where I'm reading Prince and Newberry books from this past month that have been announced. One of those is the last Gwendista. This one won Newberry this past month and is really exciting. I already had it checked out with my large pile of middle grade books so I'm really gonna get to it now. This is probably the next book I'm gonna read after the one that I'm currently reading. The one that I'm currently reading won a Prince Honor and that's Last Night at the Telegraph Club. I'm probably I want to say a fourth of the way into this one already. I've been listening to it this morning and it's pretty good so far. It's historical fiction. It deals with elements about Chinese immigration, what it was like to live in the 1950s in California during the communist scare and it also deals with LGBTQ themes as the main character is kind of questioning her identity. Then the other book that I'm reading for the Newberry video that I'm making is Red, White, and Whole. And then last but not least, I'm also trying to read for that video Revolution in Our Time by Kekla Magoon and this one, uh, Prince Honor, and it's a book about the Black Panther Party. The rest are graphic works. This past month I read only two and I thought they were both okay but they didn't like blow me out of the water so I'm hoping that some of these blow me out of the water. One that I've been really looking forward to is Who the F Are You? And I love this cover, especially the little speech bubble there that says 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited for this one. It's supposed to be kind of like a contemporary. She moves to a town that has a big Muslim population and she's used to being like the only girl wearing a hijab and in this town like everybody wears a hijab so she's trying to figure out who it is that she is um, within these new parameters. I also have Surviving the City Volume 2. I found out by reading Borders in December that there was a new volume in this series because the illustrator of Borders is the illustrator for this one. These are all really short and I feel like I probably already forgot what happened in the first one so I'm gonna go like read my review or like read um, more stuff about it. I feel like that one ended really abruptly and we didn't really get a true conclusion. I always feel that way about like tiny volumes though that there's just not enough content for me. I also have On Tyranny by Timothy Snyder. This is 20 Lessons from the 20th Century. This is the new graphic edition. I read this book when it originally came out many years ago like 2017. I know that I was living in Florida at the time so it was a long time ago. Now it has a graphic version of it and it's by the same person who did Belonging, which is a graphic um, non-fiction book memoir that I read a while ago and I wasn't like in love with but I really like the style like the way that it's collage and the way that it's drawn together and it doesn't really follow panels it's kind of like all over the whole page is her canvas in a way one that I'm really looking forward to that I've heard great things about is called the golden hour by Nikki Smith this one is supposed to look into mental health I want to say I think it uses fantasy to get there it says a story of healing friendship self-discovery and hope struggling with anxiety after witnessing a harrowing instance of gun violence the main character uses photography to cope so I'm gonna try this one out and see what I think and last but not least is an advanced readers copy that I got from work and it's the new one by Jason Reynolds the artwork is by Jason Griffin and it's called Ain't Burned All the Bright. It looks again kind of like the On Tyranny one where it's collage and it takes up the full page. It doesn't really say much about it on the back. It just says it's a manifesto on what it means to not be able to breathe and how the people and things at one's fingertips are actually the oxygen you most need. So maybe it will be about Black Lives Matter? Yes. Kind of looks like it will be. My friend at work read it and really liked it. So I think that's it for my big pile of books. I hopefully remembered everything that I wanted to share. If you've read any of these books or would like to read any of them, please let me know in the comments and I shall see you in my next video. Bye bye.